Hey guys, Brian from MBK Reptiles here. And basically today, we're just gonna go through a normal day in the middle of breeding season. So right now we're in the middle of the breeding season for our colubrids. We're in our corn snake room here at MBK. And basically this is just a little bit of the routine, what we do when we come in in the morning. The first thing that we do, cause we're all hyped up, cause you know what, we've worked all year for exactly these moments. So we're coming in, we're looking for eggs. So we color code everything you're looking at at our, at our facility and there's just, color tape everywhere. Well, they all mean something to us. For you guys, it's just a rainbow. But I mean, for us, the purple stickers is definitely what we're looking for. So basically the purple stickers means that the female have shed and that they're about to lay. So they have egg boxes or some moss and we're gonna go in. So I've already been through it. So we're not gonna waste your time of just looking through things that are have nothing happen. But this is exactly what we are looking for, guys. So here we have a clutch. Now what we would do is we would just check to make sure that she actually laid all, all her eggs. So there seems like there's nothing going on here. So we have a motley and this is a head skeleton. So not necessarily the greatest clutch, few eggs, few slugs, but that's all that matters right now. So what we do is I'm just gonna pull up. Uh, again, we're gonna have to, we're gonna clean the bin and all that, but I'm just gonna pull up the eggs, line them down here and make the count. So remove the snake, put her in her bin, make sure that we do not have any more eggs or slugs on this one. This one's all good. Put that away, put the snake away so it doesn't run away because I actually did that the other day. And this is what we're looking at. So we have a few slugs. We're just gonna remove the eggs. Now this one here is a little bit special because you can see this one looks like it's it's white as good, but it's all soft and gooey. So this one is definitely not good. Sometimes, no bueno. sometimes when they're just laid, they're a little bit soft and that's the point. So we just move slowly and just going through them. Sometimes I can take the whole egg, the whole like uh, little like mountain of eggs and just leave them there, the whole clutch. But uh, these ones look actually weird. So because there are some soft ones, uh, I, you can actually, I don't know if we can see on the, on yeah. the, on here, but we can almost see the embryo through. Kind so this one is uh, a little bit, you can see like the, the, the vein, the vein, yes, the vein works. So the embryo would be right in there. So we know what we want is to have the embryo and the vein work up on top. But this one here is a little bit weird. So we're just going to remove them. I have a, I have a feeling that probably these eggs will go bad because they're very soft, which is not normal. And that's just what we'll do. So this one will take a little bit more time here. And we're gonna go through that, but there's definitely, we're gonna put those eggs in, hoping that, you know, something happened, but I have- You know what would be good? We, could, we should tell our uh, Amy, your video editor, to speed up that process. Because yeah, that video is going to be like 29 no, minutes but long. I, I've, I've seen most of the other uh, the other clutches. We're going to try to keep it somewhat clean. But I mean, we don't want the eggs to rip. And that's really a little bit of the process. Everything's going to go through a little bit faster afterwards. So here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to place my three eggs that are here. Um, a little bit later on, uh, I'm going to come back and I'm going to candle those eggs. So I'm going to take... But in the end, I have like three good looking eggs, three weird looking eggs that don't happen and six infertile eggs from this point on. So here, what we're gonna do is we go through our Habs binder. Now our Habs binder is basically our- Loser binder? Yeah, it's, it's actually it's a pretty it's a pretty successful binder. because So we have all our clutches that are here listed at what we breed. Um, we're gonna go through them and see how it goes. So right now we're at clutch number 39 of the year. So we're here, May 27. We have really, I'm gonna write three plus three because those eggs are kind of weird and six slugs. Great. Now the female is a motley stripe. Motley stripe, head scale is butter. And our male is a Motley Skeles. So, hey. And you just killed all my OCD. Yeah, I know. Huh? <laughs> oh everything everything is blue. Everything is blue with there, and uh, I'm here with a permanent mark. I think I would kill you if I was taking care of the Calubrids. <laughs> I would just die. So this here is Skeles number 
39. So this is just the process that we're going. Now we're gonna go through uh, what we do also afterwards is I'll, I'll actually remove, uh, I have like all the, the stats from last year. So last year on her first clutch, she actually 11 good eggs and one slug. So it's a clutch of 12. Now this one here, also this time, this year, she actually gave another clutch of 12, but there was less fertility on those. So is it because of the male? of the timing, um, anything's possible. What we're gonna do is we're gonna evaluate that for the next time. But right now we gotta make sure that we feed that female for the next little while. So I'm just gonna write scale is 39 on here so that I know, and then we're gonna go and do the other ones. So organized, I like it. So here we go. It's much longer than just that, but look at this one. This one is looking Pretty good. So I'm gonna put it right here so we can leave this here. And this is a Het Scaleless Caramel Butter Sun Kiss. So this is basically our lottery corn clutch. Ooh. So let's hope that we hit our very, this is our like five, well, I think we five recessive. Chance, I think it was six recessive because I think we had a, Another one? a chance of, of adding, there was a, some more genes in there, the Damn. hypo as well. So that's one in a thousand. It's million. Much one in a thousand. So this one here, pretty nice. Here we go. So we're gonna remove her. Ooh, look at that. All empty, ready to eat some food. So we feed them for seven days straight with a small meal every day. And that's basically how we do it. Usually uh, 10 to 14 days after they lay, they're gonna go through shedding and then the cycle happens again. And then they're gonna be laying some more eggs. So here, how many eggs do we have? I'm just gonna count for me while I rate that up. Six. 13. 13 eggs, so that's pretty good. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna leave the eggs here and we're gonna candle everything a little bit later on. If you guys are interested in a little candling video, it's really not that hard, guys, because we can do some specific videos for people that actually wanna see it. But uh, you just take, we just take a little flashlight, we put it on. Sometimes I'll take my phone, I'll open the flash on my phone, flip it upside down, and then I'll put the egg on the flashlight. And then what you're looking for is a round red circle, which is basically, the little the embryo with all the vein work so you want to be able to see it really really well and make sure that the embryos are not dead now we're going to move on i think that was right here so we have a scaleless head albino right here and i mean oh look at this so the scaleless have a tendency for whichever reason it seems like their clutches are a little bit smaller but their eggs uh, seem to always be a little bit bigger why is it i'm not 100 percent sure but this is how it is for us. But I mean, look at this. This is just a perfect little clutch. Beautiful. From a beautiful snake that we have. So here we are, scaleless clutch number 41. And this is a scaleless head albino possible head butter with a candy cane sun kiss. So the candy canes for people that have been following our channel know that it's one of our favorite ones. So coming from the white and the red and the contrast that it gives, they're just insane. So this is the first time that I'm actually breeding the candy cane with scaleless because I mean, I just can't wait to see how it goes. So again, you don't need to do that. What I'm doing right now, like to just eliminate this, but I like to put a lot of vermiculite in my bins. So I like to have like just one layer. If ever there is a uh, snakes that actually like, eggs that go bad, it's easier to actually just eliminate them and it's fine. If ever they, they seem to be a little bit too stuck, then I just leave them in, leave them be, and then that'll be it. So we got five, six, seven, eight, nine eggs for a scaleless. Pretty darn good. So this should be pretty cool. So scaleless number 41, guys. And we have three more to go. And we're basically here. This one is pretty cool. So I'm opening up this bin as I'm going in and I just can't see the snake, right? So sometimes on those smaller bins, we do put, they don't have necessarily a bin, but we put all, but then as we're just moving the moss, she's just standing there with her clutch, which is pretty impressive. So this is a albino head scaleless. Now, all head, albino head scales are really cool because they're actually scaleless heads. 
So a lot of them, they don't have scales on their heads, which is really cool. And that seems to be only the case for albinos. Oh really? That's interesting. And corn snakes, yeah, which is pretty cool. So here we have these, and you're pulling up that one. Here we go. So one more. We have four. And that would be a clutch of 10 eggs. So I'm pretty happy with that. So this is basically the amount of eggs that I calculate when I say about <clears throat> on average. When people tell me like, what, what's the average clutch of corn snakes? I would say it's about 10 good eggs because we have on average 10 good eggs, but we also have clutches that give us 20 to even 30 eggs. But we also have the ones that actually don't give any good eggs, so that are all infertile eggs. For us, that will be it here. So Skelis number 42 right here. I'm just gonna write it down, Skelis number 42, so we don't mess it up. Or else we're gonna have a hell. We're gonna, it's gonna basically be hell to be able to figure that one out. So this one's really cool. So the other one before was a reverse Okiti head Skelis. So the albino okiti with a scaleless reverse okiti, which is cool. Now this one is a scaleless tessera okiti, bred with a tessera okiti head scaleless. So we're aiming for more tessera okiti scaleless. So nothing really different, but they're just so amazing. I mean, look at this. This is just a perfect clutch right here. So nice, Our always leaving one for me. I know. Very giant, so awesome. And then this one here is really in a nice, little pile so we do that now what would happen if i leave just the eggs in that i'm i'm moving them around i'm not making sure that the embryo is actually on top um, most of the time nothing's going to happen most of the time they're going to hatch out and it takes like 24 to 48 hours for the embryo to actually settle uh, where it's at so i mean but we definitely do want to put all the chances on our, in our corner to be able to have good success. So two, 13. four, 13, 13 it is. So 13 from a visual scaleless. That's so a good clutch. Really, really good clutch. Really happy with that. And then, so basically out of those, half will be scaleless, which is pretty cool. So scaleless number 43 today. Scaleless number 43. Now this one here also is, uh, oh, that was actually the next one, right? So that will be 44. Scale is number 43 here. Can't mess that up. Again, this one will be the same male, but with a scaleless reverse Okiti. So these ones are really beautiful. So this is one of our original ones from 2013. So these are one of the first scaleless that I ever imported from France directly. And I mean, look at these, this is just simply amazing. So not the greatest clutch, but don't forget guys, this snake is over nine years old. I mean, it happens like they're, they're usually very strong on their fifth. Lucky that wasn't a good one. <laughs> just the little infertile ones. Like, so basically, as we're growing them, corn, snake, corn snakes can get to breeding size within like two years. So within two years, we usually wait about three years, um, they start breeding. Now their third, their third year that they are, with the fourth year, usually the amount of eggs that they produce is on the lower side. So we're talking about clutches that are from eight to 12 eggs, usually on average that they're gonna give. But the real thing is from five, the fifth year, to the seventh year, those are their maximum like uh, <clears throat> production years. Now, we only breed them for about 10 years because we find that they're after 10 years, they really don't breed well. Now, why is it that they only breed for like 10 years and that these animals actually live 20 to even 25 years? Well, we actually push our animals production and give them double clutches. Now, is the, do they double clutch in the wild? Do they even triple clutch in the wild? I'm unsure. I would personally think, my opinion would be that they would only do one clutch. I mean, we definitely push their limit here. So we think that, I feel that I give them full, a year, a year, not a year life, but basically a life of production in 50% of their lifespan. And then the 
extra 10 years, they basically go retired and stop produ producing, which is actually pretty impressive on this case. So we have here five beautiful eggs and there was two infertile eggs. Oh, just man, I'd never give, do that. I'd give you 50 bucks if you do it right now. No, I would not do that, but I would give a hundred bucks to someone maybe to do it. Nah, I'm fine. <laughs> <laughs> or actually, you know what? This, this is something we're going to do. Maybe like eventually we're going to put up some challenges. Just, like, let us know in the comment below if there's something that you guys would be willing to do and for how much you would be willing to do. So let's say like, let's say I would tell you, hey, you know what? Eat an infertility. Like I mean, 500 food. bucks. If you can manage to pile on 500 bucks, 500 I'll do bucks it. For you. Yeah, I'll do it. I'll Before do it. You do it. But what I was thinking was that maybe like we could get people like to send us videos and maybe like maybe one day we'll be able to just like PayPal people and send them some money for all those little <laughs> challenges and we can accumulate <clears throat> videos and be like challenge videos or like something crazy and stupid. This is just my, my mind going off right now, but I love it. This is uh, what we're doing. You know, guys, we're just living in the moment. We're in our heads. We love doing what we do. So we just went through six clutches of corn snakes that were just born, that were just laid. Um, in about a month and a half, two months, uh, we're gonna be having babies. So we're gonna keep updating you with you guys. If you like these little videos, make sure you comment down below, let us know, subscribe, share the channel. We appreciate all the love and support. Um, until then, thanks for bearing with me and Antoine, especially. And until then, no stress. Talk to you later.